Question number three, and we'll start with Mr. Pursley. In your questionnaire responses, each of you answered with conviction about your views on the county's effectiveness in reducing instances of violent crime. Mr. Hart feels the county has been affected, while Mr. Pursley and Mr. Wiley feel otherwise. Please explain two to three specific reasons for your feelings on this matter. If there is violent crime in this county. How it's recorded is up to each agency. How it's tracked is up to each agency and what numbers they tend to pay attention to when reporting it to the public. We have gang issues in this county. Now, it's broken down into city jurisdictions and county jurisdictions. I'm not looking at a, a city jurisdiction. I'm not looking at the county jurisdiction in which, these, in which these crimes occur. I'm looking at the overall picture. If you want to look at county crime, and you can say county crime is down because it doesn't affect us in our jurisdictions. But when you look at cities and the crime that's occurring in the cities, which often spills over into the counties as people pass through jurisdictions, crime is up. But we're not counting everyone else's crime. We're counting our crime. As your, as your sheriff, I have to look at all the trends within the county, not just in our jurisdiction. I look at Wattsville, Capitola, Scotts Valley, Santa Cruz, because all of that crime affects the county bottom line. Because sooner or later, they're going to pass through. Our deputies might be the ones arresting these people who committed the crimes in other jurisdictions. Or the crimes might continue into the county jurisdiction. We have to look at that. We just can't say crime is down. Also, you also have to look at the communities. There are communities that will not report crimes because of their mistrust of law enforcement. So often, assaults, robberies, occur, rapes, occur in these communities that we do not get reported. Why? Because the community is not trusting of us. Why? Because we don't look like them. We don't represent them. They don't feel we're going to actually take care of them. So there is other crime out there that we don't know about. We hear about it anecdotally. We hear about it through rumor. And we have to trace, track those rumors down. It does occur. That's where I am in, I have a different opinion as far as crime in this county and the rate that it occurs and how it's reported. We have to look at everything except for not just the sheriff's jurisdiction. Thank you. Mr. Wilder. Well, as uh, Sheriff Rowak said in his uh, in a letter to the board, uh, crime, uh, both property crime and violent crime, has risen and is rising in the uh, unincorporated area of the county. Uh, and that's already happening. Now, Governor Brown has been successful in delaying the release of thousands of inmates into the community. That's why we haven't seen a dramatic rise in, in the number of, uh, of people coming back to our county from state prison for, uh, for a local uh, sentence. But uh, we're seeing more and more people being sentenced to longer terms coming back into the county. That has definitely risen. The average is up to 363 days uh, from, uh, and, and that's way for, uh, higher than it was before. Uh, so, and, and we have an inmate that's serving eight years. So we're going to see more and more people coming into the community. With the unrealistic uh, uh, closing down of the uh, minimum security facility, which was a 274 bed facility, and turning it in, uh, spending $25 million to turn it into a 64 bed facility, we're not addressing the problem. We're not going to have a place to put these. Uh, borderline high-end defenders. And we're going to see more of them released into the community, particularly when uh, the Governor Brown's delay tactics no longer work. And we're going to need to address that. We're going to need more deputies on the street. And we're going to need to use tactics that are going to uh, in, in help our response times. Uh, our response times are terrible now because we often only have seven deputies on the street to cover the entire unappropriate area. And we have uh, a report writing system that doesn't work very well, it's cumbersome, it's time consuming, uh, and that exacerbates the problem. We need to look at the basics of what we're doing. Uh, we need to get more deputies on the street to address these problems. Uh, we need to address the drug and gang problems. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I appreciate that, uh, you know, they have the CAP program and they have the, all these little 
rehabilitative programs. Uh, but uh, the, uh, you know, a third of the cap, the five million and something that the cap program received, went to uh, 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 community services, and uh, it's questionable whether those whether people are being properly referred and whether it's, it's get, actually getting to those people. So, uh, you know, we have, to, we have to address the treatment issues, but we also have to address what we're going to do when criminal acts occur. And not everybody can be rehabilitated, and there are bad guys out there, and those bad guys are going to victimize our, our citizens. So I intend to get back to the basics of law enforcement and public safety. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hart. Well, I'll tell you some facts. Uh, I, I'm a chief deputy with the Sheriff's Office now. I run our administration bureau, which includes our records division. Every 30 days or, or the first of each month, our records division sends a report to the FBI, who then files the statistics under the Uniform Crime Report. And every agency in California and across the country is required to submit this data so that we can actually track crime trends and track data and then we have real numbers, not just conjecture, we're not guessing, but we actually have real numbers to go off of. And we've had some remarkable crimes in Santa Cruz in the last couple of years, and they've been some horrific crimes. That the whole county has suffered, and, the, and our residents have suffered, and those, and those were tragic, terrible crimes. So I'm not making light of any of, of what has occurred. But crime, both violent and property crime, is on a 19-year decline. Our crime rates are at the same level as they were in the 1960s. When you look at a 20-year trend, our violent crime and our property crime is half of what it was in 1993 and 1994. So crime rate is down. Our solve rates right now, particularly in property crimes, are twice the national average. So crime rate's down, solve rate's up. We have very low staffing, and our guys are out there getting the job done every day. They're doing a fantastic job out there. So what do I attribute this to? We have a great, uh, we have a, a combination a gang team and a drug team that all agencies put personnel into. It's called CX, Santa Cruz County Anti-Crime Team. The district attorney's office oversees it, but all the agencies put super, supervisors and officers into it. Uh, and they're doing a great job out there on gang enforcement and the drug enforcement side. When you look at homicides, just a number of years ago, we were averaging 12 to 15 homicides in the unincorporated areas. And how those cases are, track, uh, are tracked is no matter who makes the arrest, it's where the crime occurred. So in sheriff's jurisdiction, we know how many homicides occurred on every year for the last 40 or 50 years. So there was a time about four or five years ago, we were averaging 12 to 15 homicides a year. In the last three years, we went three homicides, four, three in the last three years. And this year, knock on wood, we've had zero homicides in the unincorporated areas of the county. So that data alone shows that crime is down, and I attribute to the great work that our staff's doing. I also attribute to the great work the district attorney's office is doing. On violent and serious crimes, the DA's office is getting some very good convictions, and they're getting some very serious sentences, and the violent criminals are going off to state prison, and the non-violent, non-sex, non-serious criminals are staying here in our local facilities where they're receiving treatment, education, and programming. 